welcome to an hour with Jesus. <laughs> I'm so glad. You're here. I'm so glad we're here. Thank you for inviting us into your home. This Andre Crouch song is more real than ever before to me. We expect you Anytime, anytime, and how we wait to see your face, your face. We expect. Are you expecting him? Are you expecting him anytime? Anytime soon? Oh, we're expecting you, Lord. I'm glad my friend Andre wrote that song so many years ago. You know, I can't remember how many years now when I do my sound check in churches and auditoriums. That is almost always the song that I start with. I don't know. It just always comes to me, and it just feels like the right song to start with. And so that's been my uh, sound check warm up song for a long, long time, many years. And I still enjoy singing it. I enjoy listening to it, uh, the recordings of it. And um, Andre just wrote some absolutely fantastic melodies many 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 over the years he was an an unknown mentor to me he didn't know me back in the early days thankful that we got to become friends in the later years and um of course he departed the earth about uh goodness five or six years ago and uh, i've missed him i've missed his his music but anyway, we expect the Lord, and that's the way we're supposed to live. How would you live if you knew every day that it could be your last day on the earth? Well, that's how we're supposed to be living, going about our business with an urgency because the king could come tonight. He could come overnight. He could come first thing in the morning. And he may not come for another hundred years or a thousand. We don't know. No man knows 
the day or time. But we're so glad we know him and we know we're going to be with him someday. Hallelujah. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know him? Aren't you glad that he knows you and that everything that concerns you concerns him? And I never cease to amaze at that thought that the Son himself is interceding to the Father on our behalf as children of the Almighty God, engrafted in through the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Well, how you doing? Have you had a good week so far? Uh, I just think different ones who are, are tune in that say hello to me. And Patty McLeod, how are you tonight? We miss you out there in Palm Springs, but I know you're watching because you watch us every week. And we think about you so often and just send our love to you tonight, sweetie. Uh, my first pastor, Paul and Elizabeth Tenlin, they occasionally tune in from Springfield, Missouri. Hello, Tenlins. I just wanted to say a personal hi to you tonight and hope you're both doing well. Um, so many others that are friends of mine. I don't want to name a lot of names because it doesn't do you any good, but Certainly, we know so many of you who have become glory partners to our ministry that tune in every week. Hello, glory partners. I'm so blessed. We're so blessed that you stand with us and support us with your gifts, and it means the world to us, and I thank you for that. You know, we are heading to South Africa in November, and uh, it's going to be a pricey trip, and I don't now... From what I've learned in the last few days, I don't have any hope of even recovering our expenses, let alone bringing home uh, an overage of what it's costing to get down there. It's just going to be a total missions outreach. If God taps your heart, any of you that are watching, and you have a heart and a burden for South Africa, we'll be in Johannesburg, we'll be in Durban, and we'll be in Cape Town. And uh, doing probably eight to ten concerts in those areas. Um, feel free to send a gift to New Glory International, and we'll apply that to the South African tour in November. Uh, the dollar is so off kilter with what they use down there. I forget, uh, honey, do you remember? Rand. So when we were down there four or five years ago, one dollar was like 10 rand, I believe. Well, now one dollar is like 26 rand. So it's way over double what it was before. So when churches give love offerings, they may give you several thousand rand, but that doesn't even mean but a few hundred dollars, if that. Uh, so we're trusting the Lord. And I said, you know what, God? This is a missions outreach. The people of South Africa are anxious for us to come. There are some big meetings that are planned. Just bless them, and I know that you'll take care of us because he is the supplier. He is Jireh, is he not? He is. So we're going to just trust in him that he'll take care of all the needs and he'll get all the glory, and the people of God will be richer for the visitation of his presence while we're down in their land. Praise God. Also, if I, uh, I need to mention again that just in about two and a half weeks, I'll be out in western side of Texas in Amarillo and uh, ministering at a worship conference there called the Worship Gathering with Damon Stewart. And um, you're invited to that. You can go to my website and look that up. Newglory.org will get you there. And you'll find out all the pertinent information. You can also leave a donation there uh, at the website if you would prefer to. All right. Well, praise God. It's just really, really good to have you here. Lord, you've been. 
been good, so very good, Lord, you've been good to me all of my life, Lord, you've been
Praise God. You know, I was just thinking, we, we make our plans, but the final outcome is in God's hands. Last week I had my third dental surgery of 2022. That's three more than I planned on. <laughs> That's certainly three more than I wanted. But life is life. And yes, dental questions are among my, <laughs> my top first five in heaven because I've had so much work done and it's nowhere near finished yet. There's more fun to come. But you know what? He didn't promise that he would remove all the troubles from you. He promised that he would be there to walk through them with you. So even though I can't blow my trumpet this week or probably next week and maybe the week after, he's with us. He's with me. He was with me and, and the, the dentist through that procedure. Um, and he'll keep right on going with all of us through every single thing that faces us in this life. He never promised us a rose garden, as the song says. But he did promise that he would never, ever leave us or forsake us. Because after all, he's the creator of the universe. He was here before here was here. He never had a beginning. He's never going to have an ending. And he is God and we are not. So praise God. Let's just enjoy the journey, all right? Well, here's a song we learned last week taken from Isaiah. I hope you enjoyed it. Then we're going to sing it again tonight. Ah, Lord God.
Amen. Praise God. We give him praise for all these things, for throwing the stars in the sky, for putting this ball called earth out here for us to live on. Wow, what a mighty, mighty, mighty God. Mm, you remember? Well, you probably don't. Uh, Irondel. Irondel is a star they have discovered. <laughs> I'll be preaching about this in South Africa in uh, November because I love to talk about the hugeness of God, the infinity of God, and how worthy that God is for so much more than just slapping some old song together. He's worthy of so much more. But Irondell is 28 billion light years from this earth. You and I don't have the capacity with the calculator that we have been given to understand that kind of a distance. The closest star is four light years from the Earth, and that would take you 162,000 years by space shuttle to get to. That's four light years. Irondale is 28 billion light years. I mean, 28 light years is ridiculous. 28 billion light years? Hello? Do you see what I'm saying? Every calculator would explode trying to come up with that number. But that's the God that enters your heart upon your trust and belief in him and his son and what he did for us. And I love praising Jesus and giving him glory for everything he's done. And I love to sing of the mighty power of God and to throw my voice with all of its volume into the universe with praise and glory to its creator. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Love you so much, 
thing I know, Lord, the people that tune into this program every week do so because they love you so much. They don't come really to be entertained. They don't come for certainly the latest in Christian music. They come to sit for an hour at your footstool. And that's why I come too. <laughs> to sit for an hour at your footstool with the people of God and just hang out with you and love you and worship you and smile at you. Yes, we bring our needs. Many tune in every week with needs and ask for prayer. But our biggest reason for being here is just you, Jesus. And thank you for two and a half years of attendance in these meetings. For surely the presence of the Lord has been in this place and over these airwaves and continues to touch people with healing, with hope, with forgiveness, with provision as we worship you. What a wonderful thing. Mm. He's brought us 
through it all I learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God Thinking back on the things he's brought us through. Wow. Does that mean anything to you? You look back at those times when there's no way you could make it, but the grace of God somehow helped you. I've lost track of how many times the grace of God has helped me make it through when there was just no way. So many different challenges in life and seasons you go through and it is only his grace only by his grace that we make it and thank God for the gift of his grace amen well let's see are you up for a little bit of classical tonight 
I dabble with it. I don't consider myself a classical artist, although I wrote a classical song on my last CD. Have you gotten it yet, by the way? Your Kingdom Come. It's the bonus track on there called Someday, and it will help you go to sleep at night. It's got one of those enchanting melodies to it that is, I think, one of the most pretty things God has ever delivered to my spirit, and I think you'll enjoy it. Here's one that is way more familiar if you like classical music at all. Your love will be my glory 
poured over me and your grace will be my story through eternity that minister to somebody tonight or whenever you watch this. Let's turn to Revelation for a few minutes tonight. I don't know if I've shared this before. I'm going to share a little story tonight, but if I have shared it, bear with me. It would have, it would have been a long time ago if I did. Uh, Revelation, the first chapter, the ninth verse. I, John, reading from the English standard, English standard version. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom. And the patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Verse 10, very important. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Again, John, the beloved, the disciple who Jesus loved, I was in the Spirit. In other words, I wasn't just sitting around thinking about my relationship with God, doing a theological study on God. I was caught up in the Holy Spirit of God on the Lord's day, and that's when this revelation hit me. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Perga Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And the living one, I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Your translation may say 
hell, and the grave. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this, as for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in the right hand and the seven gold lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So here we have... Quiet. Here we have a situation where Jesus is appearing to John and saying, I am he who was dead and live again, and I hold the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Now, keep that in mind. A long, long time ago, I was a worship leader in a large charismatic church. And... One Sunday morning, I had, I had instruments playing, a band, and the trom trombone player was a 50-year-old man, one of the nicest people I would say I've ever met. He just was an incredibly kind and dear man. Um, he was playing the trombone, and he didn't feel well. And he set his trombone up and decided he would dance around a little bit. That was a very, very active praise and worship uh, church. And a lot of people would come up to the front and just dance during the praise time. And then uh, that's just how that atmosphere was week after week. So he set his trombone. He began to dance a little bit and he dropped with a heart attack. Dropped to the floor. Now, there's 900 people in this sanctuary. The sanctuary seats about 800. That's how full we were. We had five services every Sunday morning, and four of them were just that full. And um, it was one of those unique and incredible seasons of growth in, in the body of Christ in that church. And so, of course, the... Eldership leaders began to do what they can. 911 was called, and the people of God began to pray. And I mean, it was not some polite, Father, thank you for this food. Bless it to our bodies. Amen. It wasn't, oh, Lord, bless this man and restore his health. We, as a congregation, stormed heaven's gates and hell's gates. We might as well add that, too. Because we were rebuking the spirit of death and we were calling down the spirit of life and it was one of those incredibly surreal moments. But this man, his name was Booth Brown, was dead and did not come back to life during this incredibly concentrated prayer time that took place for several minutes until we were forced to be quiet so the paramedics, when they arrived, could have the unnecessary silence to, to work on him and try to restore him. I really think that Booth died when he hit the ground or on his way to the ground. It was a massive heart attack, and it shook our charismatic bones to the core. It shook me as a young worship leader. This was many, many years ago. I was probably somewhere in my early 30s, and I'm not anymore. <laughs> the pastor got up the next week and said, Satan stole Booth's life. Now that threw me into more of a tizzy than I was in from not seeing him raised up from the dead in that atmosphere of intense spiritual warfare and intercessory prayer. And I went to the scriptures and I found the scripture where, where Jesus tells Peter, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. And I'm going, hey, what about this God? What about this? The, my pastor just said Satan stole his life. If that's the case, what chance do I have this week of even surviving? If Satan can just go, you're next, and next week is your turn, and I don't care who you are, I'm taking you out next. That did not 
jive with my spirit because that's not the God that I read about that says greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So then, by the grace of God, I'm still not sure how, I was taken to Revelation chapter 1 that I just read to you. Do you remember what we just read? Behold, I am he who was dead and who lives again, and I hold the keys to what? Death, hell, and the grave. So, all I could do was begin to rejoice because it suddenly dawned on me. Jesus gave Peter these keys to the kingdom, except he held on to the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Do you know why? Because if he didn't, we would be living in 100% absolute chaos and bedlam in the world today. Think about it. The wisdom of God. When Booth hit the ground, he said, nope, he's mine now. You can't have him back for reasons I know and you don't. Next, that's all there was to it. Because we did everything we know to do. And I'm telling you, I wish you could have heard the level of warfare going on over this man's life. It was exciting it was blood curdling. It was thrilling. It was scary. It was people yelling out and calling life back into him. That's exactly what we were supposed to do. And I would do it today if it happened again with as much faith and fervency as I did so many years ago. But the final outcome belongs to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the one that threw Irondel 28 billion light years from the earth just by speaking it over there. He is God and I am not. And I released my disappointment, my discouragement, and I could deal with life again. Because folks, my Christianity has to make sense. I've got to find a reason for everything. Even if the final answer is God's sovereignty and that's out of your jurisdiction. I want to know that. But I don't want to forfeit things because I'm not doing my part in applying faith to every situation. We are called to live by faith and God is not pleased if we are not living by faith. And that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Jesus holds the keys. Those of you who have lost precious loved ones in the last weeks, months, or years, take heart. You did what you could. You prayed how you should. And Father called them home on his timeline for his purpose and his glory. Now rest in the wisdom of Jehovah, for he knows best. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
you've enjoyed this hour. We've enjoyed being with you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Share this program with as many as you can. We want to see our audience continue to grow in this new season and believe that it will as God reveals his presence through this program to other people. We love you. For Liz and myself, we don't see you here or there. We'll see you in the air, all right? Until then, bye-bye for now.